Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no, that's wrong music, bud. <laughs> this is Lugo Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I'm here for Peter. And the Thwip It. Thwip It Good. That's right. Too many thoughts running through my head. All right, kids. Welcome back to another episode of The Ultimate Spider Cast. I am Phil. Joining me as always. Are you drunk for Little Hellfire Day? That's right, kids. We're recording this on June 9th. You know what that means? Six slash nine. How have they left your liquor out on your doorstep for Florida woman? Hey, oh. <laughs> Speaking of Florida woman herself, it is Little Whipping Hellfire. You know my name. It's my day. This will drop on Tuesday, but yes, kids, we just recorded this on Thursday, 6 slash 9. Ah, so. A joke so, a joke so unsubtle, even Kristen gets it. <laughs> Anyone with half a uh, attention span got the joke. And that's why she's a real professor. Hey, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> He's not going to hear this. Exactly. We're not talking Doc Ock. It's fine. Yeah, there's no auto in these stories. I don't know, though. It's labeled Fantastic Four. We're doing me now. All right. That's right, kids, because today we're... Spoilers. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> spoilers. Yeah, it's, it's labeled. No matter if you're watching this or listening to it, it's labeled on the front of it. Yeah, kids, because since uh, we're getting a new Fantastic Four miniseries... I demanded that we do the original appearance of the new Fantastic Four from Fantastic Four 347 through 349. Because Phil love, misery loves company. Superhero movie bracket. I love it. Yeah, I love how you're. You know how you're like, hey, we're doing them damn movie brackets because you made me do uh, John Walker. Hail. Uh well, guess what? Guess what, babe? <laughs> you were doing new Fantastic Four because I'm doing superhero hey, movie that's bracket. A bitch. <laughs> Just like you. Oh my god, I feel like I'm in a relationship with you. We're. Just, it's just a ne- never-ending cycle of revenge. Although I'm, I'm not ending up in the backyard, so hail. Yeah, I was going to say, with, with one slight benefit, <laughs> you're not dead yet. Uh, I'm Lil's worst nightmare. I'm the unkillable boyfriend. <laughs> dark timeline. The darkest timeline indeed. <gasps> oh my god. We need to make a horror movie. Like an auto, you know, like a autobio- autobiography, but it's like a horror movie. Like, you know, you, you're burying all them boyfriends in the backyard, and then one night, they just like start rising from the grave. Did you... Did you see that trailer for Winnie the Pooh, the reimagined horror? Oh, Me- go Google that on YouTube because I guess like not the Disney version of Winnie the Pooh, but like the regular version of uh, Winnie the Pooh is like copyright. Like you know, all those things went away, so now everybody can play with those characters, and they're making a Winnie the Pooh horror story. Oh. The masks are nightmare fuel. I will warn you, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Pooh. <laughs> no. No, poo. Oh, no. Remember when Elaine wasn't having sex? Yes, I know. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, when she was uh, dating Saul Goodman. <laughs> Saul Goodman. It's all good. Uh, well, all right. So, should we get to these issues? Because we actually, we, we have two new issues to cover th- later. Fine, freaking Lee. I know. It's so weird, though, that we were covering, like, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 91, 92, 93. Now we're back to, like, Amazing number three. Yeah. Enough with your yeah. damn renumbering. Oh, I saw an ad in one of the books uh, this week. Daredevil issue two will be issue legacy numbering 650. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do a number one and then you're going to jump to 650. That's classic Marvel. That's just where it lands. But hey, man, if they could have pumped out an extra book before we did Devil's Reign, man, number one could. Can you imagine number one, 650? We're like, man, we got to do a double sized dish. <laughs> the comic gods have spoken. <laughs> Swear to me. All right. Uh, oh, no. Sorry, Ray. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, th- the fun tonight begins in Fantastic Four, number three, volume one, number 347, from December 1990. Big Trouble on Little Earth. 
That's right, kids. Strap uh, strap in, get your uh, adult beverage or uh, anxiety medication of choice ready, because here we go. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Writer Walt Simonson. Penciler Arthur Adams. Uh, inker Art Thiebert. Colorist Steve Bucoletto. Uh, letterer Bill Oakley. And editor Ralph Macchio. No, I won't make the karate joke this time. Sweep the leg, Johnny. <laughs> uh, all right. In deep space. Okay. If this doesn't, if this doesn't summon Charlie Esser, I don't know what will. In deep space, the Skrull renegade known as the. Oh no. Known as D. Lila. <laughs> hey there, Delilah. What's it like in outer space? <laughs> Delilah <sighs> is fleeing her pursuers in in the Skrull Empire. Heading toward Earth with her ship heavily damaged, she is forced to crash land. Although she manages to escape unscathed, her ship explodes, stranding her on Earth. Don't you hate when that happens? Meanwhile, at Fort... That's what happened to me. Uh, No, you're... (laughs) As much as you hate... uh, As as much as you hate it, you are human. (laughs) Some some other people on the other... Some uh, some people on the other hand... We're doing me now... (laughs) <laughs> Charlie has her phone home. Uh, meanwhile, at the Four Freedoms Plaza, Reed and Sue Richards are spending time with their son, Franklin. Because Franklin Richards is such a BA. Franklin Richards is such a BA. Oh my god. I'm so, he, He's going to get summoned. Oh, oh thank you, Lothel Fire. <laughs> the link to that trailer. Okay. Can give me not mail? Uh taking a break from trying to unlock their son's dormant mutant powers <laughs> i love how it's like yeah he's not w- even really a mutant though right well well we'll see once day oh we'll see once dan slot leaves because dan slot's leaving in a few months here oh no really i think around issue 46 or something or they said probably after- i couldn't even give him 50 damn probably after that what'd he do who'd pro- he piss off probably after his big event <laughs> he didn't hit his deadlines all- <laughs> he never hits his deadline full how far don't you know <laughs> Why you've been liking it? I mean, it's better than what everybody else was doing before him. Just saying. <laughs> like, yeah. He gets it. At least he gets it. But I never see a lot of chatter about him on that book, do you? I don't see a lot of chatter about that book. Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's why they're probably doing that. I mean, they've damaged that brand, you know, since they shut it down for a couple of years there. Headiness only gets you so far, Phil. Case in point. Uh, yeah. Yes, I don't know anyone like that. Need the money, gimme, gimme. <sighs> but I love how it's like, yeah, Franklin's powers are suppressed. It's like, oh no, let's let let's reopen that uh barrel of dynamite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for them to be so smart, they are absolute idiots. Somehow. Oh, I mean, at this point he's like they tout him as like the smartest man on earth. It's like, uh huh. On earth though, not the universe is. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like those racists at the Miss Universe pageant. I mean, every contestant I've ever seen has been from Earth. Exactly. Every one, every single one of them only have two breasts. Come on. That's just like you know, uh, football and basketball being the world champions, and they're only playing in, a, in the United, in the United States. States. Oh, yeah. like, no, 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 in Canada, one team from Canada. <laughs> hey, the NFL plays one game in England. Come on. <laughs> at least. Uh. Elsewhere in the facility, I'd love to see him play rugby instead of football. Then <laughs> everybody would absolutely quit. <laughs> football. Oh my god! I need a drop of Ray going. We're doing me now. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, just a really you know, nice package. Real football. You know where they actually use the feet to kick the ball out of the pouch, boy. More than just punting. Oh, oh, burn. <laughs> Rumpy, pumpy. He's a menace, I that, tell you. That's Ray's t shirt. Yes! Oh my god, Ray. Oh, he's, oh, he'll want to shekel for that. Just put his face on and put Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> Rumpy Pumpy Looney, more like it. Oh! <laughs> Looney Mooney Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> Rumpy Pumpy. Oh my god, Ray, we want our shekel if you use that. Uh, Alright, elsewhere in the facility, Alicia Masters. <coughs> Elijah. Um. Yeah, she hasn't been outed yet. It was a different writer, so... I mean, they didn't know it was Lija yet, but yeah, that's Lija. Uh, approaches her... Yeah, kind of... The continuity on, on this story gets kind of funky when you think about that. 
Uh, Alicia Masters approaches her husband, the Human Torch, who has been troubled ever since the Fantastic Four returned home from their mission in time and space. <laughs> troubled with the fact that he has feelings for Nebula. Uh-huh, kids. What the hell? What year was this again? Uh, 1990. Uh, time. Okay. Time sled, uh, Fantastic Four 337 through uh, 342. Uh, yeah, kids. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's all coming back to me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. And they didn't come home right away, but Thor and Iron Man were with them, who they literally at the end of the story get ripped off the time sled, so I guess they get thrown back home. Because, hey, we can't have them, have them gone for too long. They both got books, see? <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> uh, died. These comics never change. <laughs> they have just come back around again yes but he has feelings for nebula who possessed his mind after the mission <sighs> well doesn't that As all you do. i mean doesn't that always happen especially the johnny superior puss i mean i'm saying i mean he's yeah he's he's easily controlled i mean every super yeah. every superhero has their kryptonite and johnny storms is superior puss I mean, you just put him right up there with freaking Spider-Man, freaking Daredevil. No, I was going to say, no. Forget Spider-Man. He, uh, he's up there with Matt Murdock, Tony Stark, uh, Stephen Strange. <laughs> Stephen, st- oh, Stephen uh, likes to get some Strange. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Steel, you're strange. <laughs> <laughs> I have Agamotto indeed. Uh, uh, so he cannot bring himself to tell his wife, who's really a scrawl, about the situation and sto- <laughs> storms out of the room. Johnny Storm storms out of the room, kids. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere in the X-Men mansion. Hey, that's my shtick. <laughs> <laughs> Nebula's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, Kitty was right. In the. I mean- Honestly, Kitty's always right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Kitty pride indeed, my friend. Sing it, sister. Superior puss. <laughs> Side felt a couple of times. Jerry, Jerry tells George, sing it, sister. <laughs> Mark your bingo cards, kids. <laughs> In the oh lord, okay, let's let's get some uh. Uh, downloads for this in the training room miss marvel no not that one yeah not that one sharon ventura who has been turned into a thing uh yeah yeah this is so much to explain like this is not a good jumping on point i would no. just say this is not a good jumping on point no no, this I was, think I've actually blocked this from my brain. This was the Miss Marvel between Carol Danvers and Kamala Khan who showed up in the thing uh ongoing series uh who got super strength from the power broker like our good friend John Walker. As 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 all true villains really do. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> then she jo- then she joined uh Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm's Fantastic Four fill in team. Uh got turned into a thing by Cosmic Rays. And then wore the McDonald's arches on her chest. Don't believe me, Joe? Fix it. Told you, guy. Told you, kids. Come on. Exactly. Speaking of Joe's, hey, stay tuned, kids. Uh, all right. So, Miss Marvel is lifting weights while mulling over how she briefly regained her humanity while the Fantastic Four were trapped on a prehistoric island. Yes, the the two issue arc previous, right before this one. So. Oh man, you reminded me why Fantastic Four was just an absolute mess. I would take that over a lot of the current stuff, okay? I mean, outside of life story, I, there's nothing as, as, gre- as egregious as this stuff. <laughs> this is, it, was a, it, was, it was not a signing time to be a pimp if you were a Fantastic Four fan. <laughs> I give you Heroes Reborn, Fantastic Four, my dear. <laughs> Well, that's a toss-up. I mean, that I mean, the Jim Lee art was pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a toss-up. <laughs> little, little, little. Oh, I know why you like that. You're like, oh, Jim, uh, Jim Lee drawing Namor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Although I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be one of those fans. But um, that alleged new origin for Namor. I don't know. Wait, what's the new origin? He's only like half Atlantean or something like that. Wasn't that the original? Wasn't that the original origin? He's like not the prince of the. Of, it's a whole thing. I, I hope that's not true. What for the MCU? Yeah. Oh god. Oh my god! They're, they're going to give him the Aquaman. Honestly, that 
no, seriously. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I don't mm-hmm. like that. Yep. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Not my Wakanda. <laughs> Didn't they kind of do that in the comics, though? Like, instead of, like, a lighthouse keeper, what is his father, like, a, a sailor or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imperious Rex, indeed. <laughs> Yes, was. Yes, yes, wasn't his father a? Pirates are. (laughs) Pirates are. Kids, do you do you do you know the self control I have? All I have to do is mention, "Hey, Lilith, let's do a Namor podcast," and I'm sure she would snap that up, kids. It'll be called Namor's Greatest Hits. Oh! All, all the women he's ever had sex with. That's the podcast. That's it. That's the show. Well, all we have to do is go through the issues. That's all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But you know what? I, honestly, I would start with that one recently with uh, Jean Grey Red or whatever. Yeah. That's what we would start with. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, we wouldn't do him in chronological order. Because wasn't he kind of randy back in the 40s? <laughs> he was always randy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh like yeah. oh my god, we say Randy, all I can think is South Park. I know me too in my head. Randy Oh my god. Oh no, wait, um Karen. Karen. Okay, oh. Karen. Oh Karen <laughs> He didn't get it at first. I know. Why are you calling me Karen? <laughs> even the cops oh. <laughs> Then he calls himself <laughs> it, even it, even uh, even the cops. Okay, okay, Karen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh god. What are the kids doing now? Oh god okay. it, oh god, it's Karen. <laughs> Station. Oh, but Love Hellfire, September, I have some uh, Namor uh, planned, especially for Ultimate Spider Cast. So. Why? You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, why in September? I don't know. Some Mariner September? I don't know. Okay, fine. That's what you, you know. I love a good alliteration. Okay, that's fine. Damn it, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch, I'm in. And hey, maybe an early strike because, you know, maybe someone might be showing up in uh, Black Panther, you know, Black Panther 2, Black Panther list, you know? We'll see. Honestly, we don't actually know what's going on. That's all that I'll say and leave it alone. And once I, te- I don't want the mouse coming on my door. hey <laughs> Oh my. So yeah, after September, kids, uh, yeah, stay tuned because Little Hellfire will demand the Namor podcast. You know, you know, the Namor podcast, Wild and Wet. Imperious sex. <laughs> what? Oh. Imperious sex. <laughs> Good and wet. Good and wet. hey <laughs> That's for the Patreon. <laughs> oh my god, we have to do that in 2023 on the Patreon. Come on, kids. You know you would pay for uh, Lilith. Just like, oh, what's he packing in that Speedo? <laughs> uh, he's he's just like Red Bull. He'll give you wings. <laughs> <laughs> what's, he pa- what's he packing in that, uh, in those trunks? A uh, swordfish? Ah... <laughs> <sighs> September can't come quick enough. Hey-o. Hey-o. Hey. Who's September? <laughs> hey, you're going to get Summer of 69 first, okay? Oh, uh, no. Uh, all right, so back to Miss Marvel. She's lifting weights, mulling over her house. She briefly regained her humanity on the on that on that prehistoric island. Uh, she comes to realize that she is trapped in this shell that is keeping her apart from the man she loves so i mean this was interesting because like this at this point ben Grimm's on the other side of that equation because he's been turned human yeah so i never i never like him when he's human. <laughs> he is, he's literally uh, the reason why he got turned into a boulder because that's the type of personality that he has are you saying ben Grimm is the person he was hot-headed i'm just saying are you saying ben... felt invisible standing next to freaking reed i'm just saying are you saying all... You're saying he has the personality of a rock? That's an yeah. interesting artistic choice. And not choice. even Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Ooh, burn. Just a bland boulder. Yeah. Burn. Uh, like, why were him and... I still can't figure out why him and Reed were friends. I'm just saying. I don't get it. Well, neither one of... The plot point is convenient on that well, one. Well, because no one else wanted to be friends with them. Neither one of them has the greatest personality. Oh, yeah, that's right. Reed has too much personality, and he doesn't have enough, so he makes it up for the both of them. I guess I could see it. I mean, who loves... Who, 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 whose favorite characters are these? I'm that kind of freak. Touche, sir. Touche, my good sir. Suddenly, her boyfriend, Ben Grimm, comes waltzing in with some flowers for her. He also has tickets for a show, but Sharon is less than interested in going out into public that day. 
catching on to how she wants to take it down to the private time. <laughs> All right, you ready? You ready? You sitting down? She just wants to get her rocks off. I think I think I think the I'm new- telling your mother, sir. <laughs> Takes after his father. <laughs> I, I don't know how can how can I make alliteration out of Phil uh, dad joke parents. <laughs> uh, nice one, though. Thank Virtual you. Thank you. Virtual high five. Uh, yes. Uh, catching on to how Sharon is uh, depressed, Ben relents and tells her. If she needs anything, to come and see him. Hail. <laughs> At that moment, in deep space, a Skrull warship appears in Earth's solar system, hot on the trail of Delilah. The captain... Hey, the- Delilah. <laughs> What's it? Oh, she's, she's headed... Hanging out. She's headed to New York City! <laughs> you beat me to it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, the captain of the ship is furious over how she has escaped their attempts to capture her and demands that his crew capture the fugitive no matter what. Meanwhile, Delilah has taken on a human guise and takes a moment to distract the security guard at Four Freedoms Plaza in order to slip inside the headquarters of the Fantastic Four. Slipping into them DMs. Finding the human torch still brooding over Nebula, Delilah reads his mind and assumes Nebula's form. Oh, here we go, kids. That's sexual assault, but whatever. Well, they don't do it. Sex by deception. I mean, she oh, just... they bang off panel. You know it. Whoa! <laughs> no, she gives him the cattle pride love hellfire. <laughs> yeah, gave her, gave him the old Tayal ghoul. Gave him the old SVU episode. Remember? <laughs> uh, yeah. Delilah reads his mind and assumes Nebula's form, revealing herself to him. Delilah seduces Johnny, getting close enough to n- for her to knock him out with a weapon she has attached to her hand. Talk to the hand, Storm. Oh, they didn't go through the urethra like the bullies. Wow! <laughs> wow! Thank God, Charlie. Just trying to keep the super connected. Thank God he's not here for another 15-minute conversation on urethra. <laughs> you, kept, you kept that conversation going, Phil. I was there, and I was sober. I'm sorry. I'm, I told you. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm six years old, you know, when he starts talking about... When he starts <laughs> talking... didn't even get it. When he starts talking about butt play... And the butt is fine. <sighs> Oh, oh, I got a joke for you after we get off the, off the podcast. Oh, my. It must be that good if you can't say it on air. Okay. All right. So back to the story. Yeah. Uh, Nebula gave Johnny the hand. Uh, assuming the form of Alicia Masters, she then pulls the same trick on Ben using her. And that's why men can't be superheroes. <laughs> yes. All the. Cri- you know what the kryptonite is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Superior puss. Wow. <laughs> uh, hey man, she's like she's like Matt Murdock, man. She's blind, and all those other senses senses are heightened, you know. <laughs> Superior puss. Uh, oh my god! But again, retcon. It's Lija. Yeah. Uh. Allegedly, we don't even really know, honestly. Hey man, how good are how good are scrolls, man? They can. Men, women, they can make their genitalia in whatever shape they want, couldn't they? I mean, we can do that with modern medicine now, too, so it's not really Well, cool. yeah, but you don't have to. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> <laughs> they can look like a whole other person, love health. Like. <laughs> too shade. Oh, my. You know. <laughs> Whoever your heart's desire is, love health. Shifting into telepathy. True, true supervillain powers. And, and love Hellfire wishes she had them all. <laughs> Yep, shut and up and just lay there. Pyrokinesis as well. That's the trifecta, I believe. <laughs> shut up and just lay there. Gave up to me! Dear Arby's. <laughs> Dear Manscaped. <gasps> Dear Oscar Meyer. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. I wouldn't even feed that to my dogs. I could not insane consciousness promote that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where was I at? We're talk- we'll start talking about me. So she, she turned herself into a, uh, to Alicia. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. So we, we got Johnny down, Ben down. Well, she, she, save the day? she pulls the same trick on Ben using her concerns over Johnny to get close enough to knock Ben out as well. <laughs> hey, man. He's not a thing now, so it's kind of, you know, especially as he's like sitting on his bed. She's like, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, 
After putting Franklin to bed, Sue is confronted by what appears to be the Submariner. Hello! <laughs> Lilith, Lilith is like... That tells you everything you need to know. Lilith is like, I don't blame you. <laughs> Lilith's like, I would have fell for that. Uh, She's like, my husband is here, sir! And fails for Delilah's and falls for Delilah's tricks as well. Namor is confronted well, by. Well, Sue is a blonde, to be fair. I'm just gonna put that out. Hell. Hey, man, I'll tell you what, these hands are ready to eat. You can, everybody can catch these hands if you got a problem. Hey, <laughs> Namor is confronted by a, the real Alicia Masters, who demands to know what is going on, but Delilah. She's like, you touch my man, bitch! Si- you touch my Silences her with a single blow across the face. <laughs> give her the old sabus. <laughs> exactly. She didn't even give her the shock. She just went, Pew! you know. She, you know, give her the old, uh, the, not in the face. <laughs> uh, it's right here. Gimme, gimme. <laughs> oh no, Alicia comes in. Tap, tap, tap in my way. <laughs> Philip. Or was that Delilah? <laughs> Nobody knows. All right. So yeah, she backhands Alicia. Back Alicia. <laughs> uh, yeah. Silence her with a single blow across the face, knowing that Miss Marvel would be too powerful for her weapon. The Skrull <laughs> Renegade disguises herself as Ben Grimm and <laughs> tricks Sharon into drinking a drugged cup of tea. <laughs> oh my God! That's how they take you out, man. Just drug your drinks. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I've built up an immunity to a lot of things. That's all I'll say about that. Scream it! Am I supposed to get my medicine soon? <sighs> Finally, assuming the form of the invisible woman, Delilah tries to attack Reed in his lab. His naturally pliable body allows him to resist the jolt from her weapon, but after a brief struggle, she manages to knock out Reed as well. And she starts catching the feelings for it. She's like, oh, he's, he's quite attractive for an Earth thing. She like... <laughs> If only he hadn't caught on so quick. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe if you had the taser right in the palm of your hand. <sighs> this <laughs> She's like, ooh, a rubber man. Ooh. <laughs> the Skrull ship soon arrives in Earth orbit and seeking a means of tracking Del- Delilah down, the Skrulls on board begin scanning the planet. They find readings of creatures that share similar features to Skrull physiology and track it to Monster Island. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? Hmm. If Delilah's here, where's Samson? Historical. <laughs> historical <laughs> joke. Slow <laughs> niche. Slow niche. That one's for you, Connor McKenna. All right. Uh, <laughs> landing on the island, two Skrull scouts are sent out to investigate, and they are horrified to see that the island is infested with monsters and retreat back to their ship. After a deeper scan, so you go to a place called Monster Island, and what were you expecting? Well, I don't, did they know it was called Monster Island? I can't remember. <sighs> it's right there on the GPS, Phil. <laughs> you will reach Monster Island in 500 miles. Two light years away. <laughs> Make a next left at Bermuda. Uh, the deeper scan, they discover that these monsters are what their scanners were picking up. Deciding to utilize these monsters to hunt down Delilah, the Skrulls uh, fire devices that put the monsters under their control, hoping that they will flush them out. Meanwhile, deep below the earth on Subterranea, one of the Mole Man's outsiders informs him... Oh no, he's definitely going to wake up now. You mentioned one of the Mole Men. Oh no. The Mole Man, yes! (laughs) Uh. We're doing me now informs him that someone is stealing the monsters from the island above. Furious at this affront, the mole man gathers his forces to confront them on the surface. Uh, ste- He's like, get off my lawn, you damn kids! <laughs> get off my island. Back at Four Freedoms Plaza, Delilah is accessing the Fantastic Four's data banks to locate other superheroes who can, who she can trick into assisting her on her mission. Hmm, who? which of these dummies can I trick? Hold on, kid. Well, whose show is this? Yes. Ah, she is briefly interrupted by news reports about monsters attacking various cities on the in the world, tipping her off to the fact that her pursuers are getting closer. However, she finds who she is looking for and begins to put plans into motion to gather the heroes she needs. Later, 
Sp- later, <laughs> Spider Man is sw- is sw- I know is is swinging through the city when suddenly his spider sense starts going. Wh- like, flip, flip, flip my way down. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but yeah, all of a sudden his spider sense uh, goes it starts tingling like crazy. It's ting ting tingling, ting ting tingling, uh, and compels him to go to Four Freedoms Plaza. There he finds the Hulk, the Gray, oh boy. the Gray Hulk kids, and Wolverine, who are already on site in the heat of an argument. Spider-Man interrupts before the pair can come to blows and asks them why they are there. The pair tells Spidey it is none of his business, but before they can talk further, the security guard comes out of the building, telling them that they have been summoned by, the, by Susan Richards and that he is to invite them into the Fantastic Four's headquarters. Uh, as soon as the fourth g- guest arrives, <laughs> they suddenly discover who it is when the ghost rider speeds by on his motorcycle and begins driving up the side of Four Freedoms Plaza to the top floors. Spider-Man and Hulk follow suit, ascending the building in their own unique ways, leaving an embarrassed Wolverine behind to take the elevator. <laughs> yeah, short stuff. <laughs> uh, Wolverine arrives to see that to see what appears to have been a battle in the FF's headquarters, unaware that Susan Richards is really Delilah. She tells them that her team was attacked. She then shows them into Reed's lab, where Ben, Reed, Johnny, Sharon, and Alicia are laid out on uh, slabs with blankets over their faces. She tells them that the Fantastic Four have been murdered. <laughs> There's been a murder in Full Freedom's Plaza. Not Savannah. <laughs> she explains that she hasn't made the news public for fear that the Fantastic Four's enemies may all come out of hiding upon the news getting out and ask the four assembled heroes to assist her on tracking down the killers. Yeah, we don't need any, uh, you know, malcontents and their horny doom bots causing trouble. She explains that her that her enemy is responsible for the monsters being set loose all over Earth and provides them with a subphotonic spectro and analyzer. So MacGuffin that she claim that she claims will allow. I mean, we're, we're we're at the Fantastic Four headquarters. That place is full of MacGuffins. First of oh yeah, that's a, that's yeah. Reach a, Reach be a cook. Yeah, because that's all he makes is MacGuffins. Uh, that she claims will allow them to track the unique energy source of their foe. And according to Charlie, he's a pimple popper MD. <laughs> yes, that was a Seinfeld reference. We're doing me now. I know. I call you pimple popper MD. Skin, Skin cancer. <laughs> so it backfired. Yes. Uh. That mole's been the same size for thirty years. You've lost a lot of hair. I am aware. <laughs> ah. With Sue's proposal finished, Spider-Man, Wolverine, the Hulk, and Ghost Rider all agree to help track down the killer and bring them to justice. Unlimited ju- Oh, wait. <laughs> 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 Where's that happening? It's like Man Thing March, oh boy. It's just a Oh, you mean our Justice League Justice Society podcast that you can catch every week, every Thursday on the uh, Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast? That is correct, sir. <laughs> I tip my hat to you, good sir. <laughs> All right, I'm looking over the notes here. A lot of it's just, oh, hey, uh. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel! <laughs> no, just uh, this how happened, this issue, and last issue. Oh, Miss Marvel and Franklin were last seen in Power Pack 62. Power Pack. What a blow. What a waste of butter. Wow! Oh, here we go. See? I was right. The woman claiming to be Alicia Masters in this issue is actually a Skrull spy named Lija, as revealed in Fantastic Four 358. She replaced the real Alicia uh, circa Fantastic Four 265 because everyone was busy with uh, everyone be going missing in Secret Wars. In order to... Exciting sp- time to be a Skrull. Oh! <laughs> oh, remember when we used to think Ray was a Skrull? Oh, that's true. That's true. Yes. He's still he's still under suspicion. Out of the gooch. Sausage. a scroll. Nice. Thank you. I mean, they're all scrolls in Australia. Isn't that kind of the point of Australia? 
That's where. That's where. Bruce Wallace, really? That's where. That's where England used to send their prisoners. Well, not anymore. (laughs) Another Seinfeld reference. Look at Louisiana. They sent their prisoners and hookers. Wow! Wow! It's true. I know. Prisoner had to marry a a, a prostitute and get on a boat. I'm on a boat. Not that kind of boat. I know. All right. So, any thoughts on this issue, or should we move on? It was a lot of setup. A lot of setup. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's get to the glue issue, shall we? Oh my! All right, kids. Fantastic Four three forty eight, and I. If you've been reading co- Marvel comics for any amount of time, you know the cover. Oh yeah. There's no oh, back, yeah. no background. All it is is the four, the four of the new Fantastic Four on the cover, and it'll be the show art because, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so. Come on, put it up for the YouTubers. Hey, oh what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Lilith, that's for the Patreon. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Look at that Hulk. That's a good Hulk. That's, that's a good looking Hulk right there. That's Joe Fit. That's Joe Fix it in his prime, baby. Yeah. All right. So Fantastic Four three forty eight. I can't believe you had to come all the way from Vegas for this. I know. Uh, so January nineteen ninety one. Uh, where monsters dwell, or is it where creatures roam? Oh lord. So yes. So Walt Simonson still writing. Oh, two pencilers this time. Arthur Adams and Gracine Tanaka. Two, sure, sure. two inkers, Art Thiebert and Al Milgram. Oh, Al Milgram, there we go. Yep, and the rest of the team is the same. Uh, and the rest, as they say, kids, was history. All right, kids, take another swig of your adult beverage, because here we go. Trick, uh, tricked into thinking the Fantastic Four have been murdered. Spider-Man, Wolverine, the Hulk, and Ghost Rider have been gathered by the Skrull renegade Delilah, disguised as Susan Richards, and sent on a mission to collect the items she is searching for under the false pretense that they are seeking out the Fantastic Four's killers. <sighs> Going no o- questions asked with these freaking dummies. I know. Going over... So ha- pick the right ones! <laughs> okay, I'll help you. I'm trying to think, is there anybody more gullible she could have got? Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be a good guy now, okay. Oh my. That's a Hawkeye fan there, kid. I just want to be liked and loved and be a real Avenger. That's all. Oh my god, I'm sorry. What, Wonder Man? Exactly. Going over how Sue had sh- Sue had shown them the dead bodies of the Fantastic Four, the so-called new Fantastic Four race off in a rocket cycle using a tracking device that will allow them to find what they think is the intended target. As they speed off, Delilah, still disguised as Sue Richards, begins the next phase in her plan. She begins looking into the Fantastic Four's database on the scrolls to see if there is any reference to the device she is looking for. With little time and her ability to navigate Reed's device is being limited, Delilah decides to use his family as hostages in order to force him to do her bidding. Wow, that was a big mistake, sister. Uh Uh-huh. All right, kids. If you have, if you're not uh, dizzy enough yet. Meanwhile, on Monster Island, the Skrulls are monitoring the status of the monsters they uh, they used from the island to attack the world in an effort to flush Delilah out. The commanding officer hopes that. What, no toilet sound effect though. Come on, you're losing it. Wait, what? Oh. Toilet. Flush her out. I'm brand. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, the student becomes the teacher. Little Hellfire. <laughs> The commanding officer hopes that they can accomplish their mission without anyone discovering their involvement. However, his hopes are not going to happen as the Mole Man and one of his uh, giganto beasts are observing the alien <laughs> ship that has landed on his island. I love that pause. Wait, what? Ah, tell you, kids, it's rough having a giganto monster. Hey, <laughs> uh, uh... Discovering the intruders are not from Earth, the Mole Man orders this creature to attack. Joke's on him. Mm-hmm. Back at Four Freedoms Plaza, Delilah has tied up the rest of the Fantastic Four and Alicia Masters and leaves them trapped in the elevator. <laughs> it's like it's just rope. You know, you know, Miss Marvel can't flex or she's going to, like, strangle Ben Grimm. 
<laughs> Johnny has an abe- asbestos bag over his head. Couple, cu- of couple feet of rope and an asbestos bag, and she took. She's taken out the entire Fantastic Four. And this is why they had to be canceled. <laughs> Uh, uh, she then goes back to the medical lab where she just to to think three years later they get a cartoon i'm just saying call the four well i know that was really terrible i I, I won't talk did you know reed richards is elastic Uh, where she revives Reed and using her telepathic ability, she begins pushing Reed to assist her in her search for an inorganic technotroid, a powerful robot that is hatched from an egg. It's a horny doom bot. Mm-hmm. Mama, where do horny doom bots come from? Eggs. Scrawl, scrawl eggs. Clearly. <laughs> Again, he didn't invent that crap, man. He's just stole. That's all he does. He still he tries to steal like power, silver surfers, the beyonders. Yeah, he steals tech. With his family's life at stake and his mind uh That's why he hates Tony so much. True. And his mind falling under the influence of Delilah, Reed has no choice but to help her. As Reed continues to work on searching for her query, he can't help but find Delilah attractive when in the form of his wife. Sure. It's like the same. Just the old Scott Summer. She looked just like you. What did you want me to do? Hey, she looks the same, but she's different. Uh, at that, at that very moment, the new Fantastic Four are flying onward to their destination. Wolverine checks the news reports and learns that monsters are attacking Moscow, San Francisco, and Mexico City. Near Washington D.C., the heroes spot a commercial airliner that is being attacked by the monster known as. Skareel. That's uh, two E's, kids. The Hulk dives from the ship to attack the creature head on. With the cabin of the ship breached, Spider-Man dives down and uses his webbing to seal the damage. Uh, (laughs) While Ghost Rider unleashes a fury of hellfire-infused chain links at the monster. As you do. Mm Mm-hmm. As the battle rages, the Skrulls on Monster Island finally locate Delilah in New York City. Yeah, she was looking for salsa after all. Oh, I'll, just, I, I, you have, give me a sentence. It's Delilah in New York City. I just hear the song in my head. Before they can arm their weapons to destroy, to destroy the city uh, from afar, the ground under the alien ship suddenly collapses into a massive sinkhole. What is this, Monster Island or Florida? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> that's true. I mean, who, who, who gets more sunlight? You or the mole man? Pretty sure it's the mole man. Probably. He w- oh, she gets some of those glasses like he has. That's what those are for. Uh, I already got this year's Halloween costume picked out, Phil. Sorry. Ooh! What is it? You'll find out. October's right around the corner. It's always Halloween somewhere. I'm not one of those people, though, honestly. I hate the fall. Back over Washington, the new Fantastic Four force Skreel to flee the scene, and they follow it all the way to the Bermuda Triangle. There they pass through a strange distortion field that brings them to Monster Island. There they spot the hole in the ground where the Skrull ship sank and follow their readings down there. Back at Fort Freeman's Plaza, Reed has uh, discovered a possible clue to what happened to the inorganic technotroid after discovering a tabloid report about a strange monster stealing uh, stealing spotted carrying a UFO near the Catskill Mountains. Oh my god, he's following leads from uh, the tabloids. Uh, We're doing me now? It's Men in Black Theory. That's all. Yes. Uh, believing that this might be the technotroid, Reed and quote-unquote Sue head out immediately. As he leaves, Reed tells his robotic receptionist that he's leaving for a day trip and tells her that everything is fine and she should tell that to his friends in the Marines. They soon f- the Marines now. <laughs> they soon fly a sky cycle to the location where the monster was reported as being seen. There they f- seriously, kids, you're like another sky cycle. They were big in the early nineties, kids. Avengers, Fantastic Four, they're big sky cycles. Fantastic Four did it first, though. Hell, Grunwald, Captain America, that's 
you know, after he gets after he gets the uh, identity back from John Walker, man, that's always traveling on his flying sky. He cycle. had to be flashy, you know. He had to let him know this is the real deal. This is government issue, baby. Oh please, government issue. No man, it's it's, it's either Stark or uh, Wakanda. Come on. I mean, government stolen issued property. <laughs> I thought that went without saying, but okay. All that all that vibranium we stole from Wakanda. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so they fly the sky cycle to the location where the monster was reported as being seen. There they find a cave entrance that has been sealed. Delilah uses her blaster to clear the rubble and they make their there, way inside. Samson? Uh, he's no doctor. <laughs> uh, deep below the earth in subterranea, the mole man has Giganto hail shake all the scrolls out of their ship. <laughs> he then begins blasting at their feet with his power staff, making the mans to know what they are doing with the monsters. <laughs> Milth is like, power staff, you say? Hey, do the drop. What? Which drop? You know the drop. I love a man with a... Oh, okay, okay. I thought you, thought you were talking about yourself for a second. Okay. I'm a sucker for a guy with a powerful rod. Thank you. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> Uh, so yes, the the giant mo- monster shook shook the scrolls out of their ship. Well, that escalated quickly. Choke that chicken. <laughs> uh, really? Oh, spe- speaking of choke that chicken. Uh, yes. Uh, I, when you hear this, kids, in a few days, expect a uh, CBR article on all the appearances of the new Fantastic Four or the origin. <laughs> who who are they? Nobody tell Brian. Five reasons why you should read it. Five reasons you shouldn't. <laughs> who you know, who who were the new Fantastic Four? Or where did they first appear? Uh, jeez. Uh, at that way to make a person, just a singular person, hit a paywall when they come to our podcast. Oh, a singular person. Nobody tell Brian. Somebody get his IP address, bro. Oh, please! He'll send one of his some, one of his other CBR flunkies in. It's wintering time. At that moment, the new Fantastic Four are trying to sneak into the scene. But give themselves. <laughs> How dare you steal from us? We're little. Come on. <laughs> but give themselves. I a- mean, speak for yourself, there. Hey, oh. <laughs> you're little. I mean, not your anger, but your your physical body. Well, what happened? I'm sorry, Brian. <laughs> At that moment, the new Fantastic Four are trying to sneak into the scene, but give themselves away when the Hulk accidentally walks into Giganto. When the Hulk tries to fight the creature, it grabs him, but it eventually flees when Wolverine sticks one of his claws between its toes. <laughs> the Mole Man has noticed their presence by this point and demands to know what they are doing, in, doing intruding in his domain as well. Seeing the army of Moloids outnumber them, Spider-Man decides that diplomacy is the best avenue and explains to them why they are down in the Mole Man's domain. Learning that the Skrulls have been captured, Spider-Man asks to see them. When they are brought in, when they are brought to the prisoners, the mole man notes that their commanding officer is missing. Recalling how scrolls are shapeshifters and nobody could have escaped from the cavern, the new FF deduced that the commanding officer must have disguised himself as a rock. When they start smashing rocks, the scroll commander loses his nerve and reveals himself before he can be pulped by the Hulk's massive fist. With no time to waste, the Ghost Rider uses his penance stare to force the Skrull Commander to explain why he and his crew are on Earth. He explains how they have t- how they have come to Earth to prevent Delilah, a Skrull renegade, from attaining an inorganic technotroid, a powerful weapon that is used to defend the ruler of the Skrull Empire. When Spider-Man reveals the device they used to track the Skrulls and how they got it from a lady in New York... They suddenly realize that Sue Richards, quote unquote, must have been Delilah in disguise. How dare the internet do this to us on June 9th when Lilith is at the height of her powers. Recognizing the device, the Skrull commander explains that it can be reconfigured to find her. Just as they do so, they soon realize that Delilah is on her way and she soon arrives with Reed Richards in, still in her thrall. Uh, when the Hulk orders Reed to stand aside so they can deal with the Skrull renegade, Reed is now fully convinced that the Skrull is his wife, refuses to turn her over, telling the Hulk that it is that it will be over his dead body. The Hulk informs Reed that he will be more than happy to oblige. Uh, 
What a cliffhanger standing up to Joe fix it. The woman who appeared, yeah, again, it's Elijah, the impersonating Alicia, but again, retcon, they don't know that yet. Uh, after its appearance here, Skareel was not seen until Silver Surfer Warlock Resurrection number one. Uh, oh, and of course, the Fantastic Four's robotic receptionist, Roberta, was last seen in Power Pack 57. Mm. And maybe it's just a visual joke, but one of the scrolls looks like a caricature of Popeye the Sailor. Wow. Mm. and ooh, a continuity error kids the story states that monster island is located in the bermuda triangle that is not correct as in fantastic four number one it is stated that monster island was located in the south pacific however since everyone had to pass through a strange portal to reach monster island from bermuda it could be that there is a portal to monster island in the in the triangle similar to the one that teleported uh, Jim Scully and his eventual allies to Earth's prehistoric past in Skull the Slayer number one. So, portals, kids, portals. That was Fantastic Four 348. Yeah, like I said, like we were saying, uh, it's a different writer. I think it might be Tom DeFelco, and like another 10 issues reveals that Alicia Masters was the Skrull spy, uh, Elijah, just so they could get rid of her marriage to Johnny Storm. Hey, hello. But yeah, yeah, kids, uh, yes, this Alicia Masters was a spy, like you said. It was in the notes. Uh, supposedly, Elijah was Alicia Masters since Fantastic Four 265, which they'll reveal because, yeah, they swapped her out while everyone was busy with Secret Wars. And again, like, they pulled the retcon because they wanted to get rid of Johnny Storm's marriage to Alicia Masters. All right. Uh, all right, so we might have lost those Hellfire. So, all right, let's get this done. Hold on, kids. I lost my notes for a second. Let me pull them back up. Pale. All right. I think she's, I think she's training me for uh, when she takes a summer vacation. I'm going to have to do this show myself. Uh, or if you would like to be a fill-in host, uh, if you would like to be a reserved member of Ultimate Spider Cast, uh, yes, email capesandlunatics at gmail.com or some of our podcasting friends know how to get a hold of me on Facebook. So, yeah, let me know if you want to do a fill-in episode or something. All right, so let's finish this up. Um, Fantastic Four, 349, February 1991. Eggs got legs. Uh, spoiler. Uh, same team as last time. All right, the two pencilers, two inkers. Okay, the only thing standing in between the Skrull Renegade, known as Delilah, and the various forces against her, which include Skrull soldiers hunting her, the new Fantastic Four, the Mole Man and his legions, is Reed Richards. Uh, all right, let's see. So, yeah, the only thing standing between uh, Delilah and everyone else is Reed Richards, who is under her telepathic control. Before a fight can break out, Delilah casts a uh, Delilah casts calls a halt to hostilities and reveals her true form. She then begins to appear to the Earthlings and asks them to kill the Skrulls that are after her. Delilah's telepathic. Uh, uh, Delilah's telepathic influence begins to affect the Mole Man, who empathizes with her role as an outcast and orders his minions to kill the other Skrulls. The only one unaffected by Delilah is the Ghost Rider, who decides that the Skrulls should not die by her thralls and erects a hellfire barrier around the aliens. Uh, this interruption also causes the rest of the new Fantastic Four and the Mole Man to snap out of it. Realizing her plan is a bust, Delilah then orders Reed Richards to take her out of the area and they flee on his sky cycle. The Hulk tries to stop them by tossing a boulder at them, but misses. So Hulk just threw a big rock at Reed and Delilah. <laughs> In the aftermath of the battle, Spider-Man realizes that they have been duped by Delilah the whole time and that the Fantastic Four have been alive the whole time and their group has been nothing more than her pawns. The new Fantastic Four then head after them with the Mole Man and his ally and his armies in tow. Spider-Man uses his spider sense to help lead his comrades through the tunnels after their foe. However, down a ways, they trigger off an explosive and are almost buried alive if not for the Hulk holding up the cave, uh, cave in with all his immense strength. Hmm, where have I seen that before? Secret Wars. Uh, and if you don't not familiar with that scene, stay tuned for August on uh, Avengers Declassified. Charlie Esser and I, for the month of August, we'll be covering the entire original Secret Wars series. So stay tuned. Uh, 
Further down the tunnel, Delilah uh, has read Land the Sky Cycle, and she uh, shapeshifts into the form of Susan Richards in order to reassert her control over Reed. Apparently, falling in love with Delilah, Reed kisses her. Feeling attracted to Richards herself, uh, Delilah explains what the inorganic technotroid is, an incubated defense robot that is used to defend scroll rulers that is hatched from an egg. Uh, seems kind of seems kind of complicated. Yeah, so this this basically an attack droid coming out of an egg. The technotroid then imprints and becomes loyal to whomever it sees first, thus making their need to find it important, lest it imprints itself on something else. Still trapped under the rubble, Hulk tells his teammates to get a move on so they can get out of the cave in alive. Ghost Rider offers up a, a solution by spinning the his chain around at incredible speed and is able to bore through the rock and dig them uh, a tunnel to freedom. Meanwhile, back at Four Freedoms Plaza, Sue, Sue, Sharon, Ben, Alicia, and Johnny awaken to find themselves bound up in the elevator with the series of knots uh, set up to choke them if they try to escape and Johnny having an asbestos lined bag on his head. See, kids, I was not kidding. He's, it seems like they are stuck until they are rescued. No sooner are they aware that the elevator kicks in the gear again and they are discovered by Franklin. Franklin frees them and the Fantastic Four rush into the control room where they find their robotic receptionist, Roberta. She explains that Reed left with a woman who appears to be Sue, but used the code, tell my fr all of my friends in the Marines, suggesting that something was up, uh, leading her to discover that the rest of the team and, uh, and the, uh, wait, hold on. But her discovering the rest of the team and getting Franklin to assist in rescuing them. Learning that Reed is somewhere below Monster Island, the Fantastic Four rush off to get to him, leaving Franklin in the care of Alicia. <laughs> Leave your kid with a scrawl. Come on. Back below the tunnels, Delilah and Reed are continuing the search for the Technotroid. Along the way, Reed discovers strange hieroglyphics on the walls from centuries ago. Reed is curious, but Delilah forces him to continue on their trek. They soon find a kind of female giganto sleeping uh, a capture, uh, sleeping on a captured skull, scroll saucer. Reed tosses a rock far off and the noise causes the giganto to go to investigate. As they approach the skull, the scroll saucer, they are stopped by the new Fantastic Four who have finally caught up with them. Delilah then takes Reed hostage and threatens to kill him if they do not free the egg from the scroll saucer. She explains that she selected the four heroes to be the new Fantastic Four because their unique powers would allow her to free the Technotroid egg from its protective casing. The Hulk uses his strength to smash into the ship and remove the egg, while the Ghost Rider's Hellfire strips away a defensive coating with a spinning stream of lasers blocking the shutoff switch. Wolverine disables the mechanism with his adamantium claws. Finally, Spider-Man fires his webbing to activate the release mechanism freeing the egg from within uh, however before delilah can grab the egg her thralls stand in her way <clears throat> to make matters worse the mole man and his armies have arrived to claim the egg for themselves before a full-on battle can erupt the real fantastic four arrive on the scene while most of the heroes fight back the hordes of the mole man spider-man races to stop delilah from getting the egg in order to throw the hero off she changes her form into that of his wife, Mary Jane, causing Spider-Man to pause long enough to be blasted away. Suddenly, the fight is interrupted by the return of the male Giganto and the other monsters called back by the Skrulls. They order a full surrender, revealing their orders are to either reclaim the Technotroid or destroy the planet to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. During the standoff, the egg hatches in the hand of the female Giganto and the Technotroid imprints itself on the Giganto. She then orders her Chow to destroy the Skrull commanding officer. With the Skrull's leverage destroyed, Delilah tries to make a break for freedom by changing back into the form of Sue Richards and trying to enthrall Reed once again. Reed seemingly falls for it, uh, embracing her in a kiss, but this is all a ploy to steal her weapon. Reed then knocks her out and runs to his wife and kisses her. Man, Reed Richards getting a lot this uh, these issues. Meanwhile, Delilah has recovered from the punch and is left to the mercies of the Ghost Rider who forces her to gaze into, into his penance stare, causing her to go mad. He then turns 
shifts her over to the Skrulls and suggests they leave. Having had enough, the Mole Man demands that they all leave his domain or prepare to die. But Spider-Man manages to talk him down as they all seem to have accomplished what they set out to do and will leave willingly, pointing out that a battle would only cause more damage to the Mole Man's domain. Yeah, new Fantastic Four, old Fantastic Four. I mean, come on. Joe, fix it. Come on. Meanwhile, above the surface... Okay, kids, it's the 90s. Who's the one character that didn't appear in the story yet? Meanwhile, above the surface, the Punisher is following the the tri uh, the tricephalo tricephalos in an apache helicopter as it flies back to monster island intent on bringing his personal war against crime down on the mysterious island however as he passes through the clouds and he's able to view the island he spots the fantastic four spider-man wolverine ghost rider and the hulk on the island surface believing that they have the situation well under control the punisher turns around and returns for home yes kids we ended it on the punisher Thank you, 1991. <laughs> Punisher, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, and Hulk. Yes, kids. This is the 19... This is 1991. Uh, this issue... Yeah, read. Find some artifacts that suggest the creatures of the Mole Man's domain have a connection to the Celestials and the Deviants, stating that the Avengers have detailed information in their files after visiting Lemuria, uh, which has similar artifacts. Marvel Universe number four... Four uh, confirms that the monsters in the Mole Man's domain were created by the Deviants. The Deviants, in turn, were created by the Celestials, as revealed in Eternals number one. The Avengers learned of the Deviants in Avengers 246 through 248. Some of uh, Will Allred's favorite stuff. Uh, and yes, Ben Grimm uh, lost his thing powers in Fantastic Four 326. He will get them back next issue in Fantastic Four 350. Uh, oh, and then this thing when the Fanta the old Fantastic Four arrival monster island. Ben looks like a thing. He's wearing a thing exoskeleton. Uh, this is based off the original that was constructed for Ben back in Fantastic Four 168. So close. When he uh, lost his powers back then too. Uh, but that one was destroyed in Fantastic Four 175 when Galactus forced Ben to resume his thing form. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ben started wearing the suit again in uh, Fantastic Four Annual 22. Uh... Boy, lots of notes here, kids. Uh, all right. So, yes. Crazy, crazy 90s story. Again, we're getting a new Fantastic Four uh, miniseries. So, I figured, hey, let's cover the old one. I wish Loth Hellfire was was here to cover it. But uh, we should have Loth back next episode. So, technical issues going long. So, yes. Covered that. I'm going to cut it there. Maybe we'll save the uh, new books for next time. So, let me just give you your homework here and we'll do our plugs and get out of here. Uh, can't do a three hour show. You know, I'm no, I'm no Connor McKenna. Uh, hey, -o. <laughs> love you, Connor. Uh, all right, let's see. B -b 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 next month. I'm, I mean, next week, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but let me double check. All right. Yes. Next week, uh, Lilith and I will be covering amazing Spider-Man 351 and 352. It's a Spider-Man and Nova team up, and it's the first two issues of Amazing Pencil by Mr. Mark Bagley. So you know I'll love the art. And then in two weeks, it's another Sausage Fest with me, Ray, and Dave. Uh, we'll be covering Blood Brothers from uh, Sensational Spider-Man 4 and 5, Amazing Spider-Man 4, 11, and 4, 12, Spider-Man 68, so close, and Spectacular Spider-Man 234. And then, of course, that'll bring us to the end of uh, June, and of course, you kids you've been listening to the cape any capes lunatics or capes lunatics psychic show you know summer of 69 is coming in july so for this show uh for summer of 69 you'll want to read amazing spider-man's 68 through 79 that'll be your uh, whole july until we get to uh the sausage fest so yes uh send us your uh, all the thoughts on that all those especially summer of 69 it's going to be fun so make sure you uh yeah, send us your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can follow Ultimate Spider-Cast on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, join the Web of Spider-Man Facebook fan group. I believe we are now at 3.8 thousand members, over 3.8 thousand members. So you have a lot of friends to talk Spider-Man with. Uh, so yeah, find links to all the various social medias for all the shows we do. Uh, Links to the YouTube channel. Everything we do gets a video, uh, including this. So smash that subscribe button so you don't miss a minute of the fun and games we always do. Smash it. 
And most importantly, again, remember uh, the Patreon. Again, we're out here on our own now, paying for this out of our own pocket. So every little bit helps, but 3 to $5 gets you the exclusive content, uh, early access to creator interviews. Once a month, Lilith and I talk to the master himself, Mr. DG Chichester. I got the good mic out for you guys. Uh, the June uh, episode I mean, towards the end of the month will be West Coast Avengers 38. So another fill-in issue. So check that out. And superhero movie brackets because Lilith Hellfire loves my pain. So again, the uh, June episode, again, come probably coming in at the end of the month, will be Superman 3 versus Superman 4. Uh, you don't want to miss that. And... If you just want to make a one-time fee and get even more for your money, uh, pick up some Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Uh, find it all, all in one place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And Miss Loth Hellfire, remember, follow her everywhere. Uh, she's on, she's at Loth Hellfire on Twitter. What is it? Is it TikTok, Instagram? I forget, but yeah, she's at Loth Hellfire 86 and of course, you know you can always find her at Love Hellfire 69. Either do the 6 or do the 9. That's right. I need that as a drop, please. Yeah, we have plenty of drops about that. It's a gaping hole. Hey, oh. Okay. Gonna do my favorite drops. Let me get a ride on your alligator back, bro. Somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. All right, kids. Thank you for joining us. Come back in one week. Amazing Spider-Man 351 and 352. Spider-Man and Nova. And again, in two weeks, the Australians are back for Blood Brothers. Then Rally. And then after that, it's all summer 69. But until then, swing on back. Thwip, thwip. Thwipity, thwip. Thwipity, thwip.